So yeah, so you have no right to come in and approach that person, okay? So we do need to make sure that you understand what this no competition clause. Now, if you are particularly bringing a client across with you, um, we will have discussions before you bring that client across um, and we will make sure that there's a document signed that says, if you do leave the company to start your own company, that you are allowed to have contact with that client because they're someone that you brought to us. But as for our actual clients, you are not to have any communication with them as in trying to prompt them to come to your own services, okay? So please take note of that and remember that you have signed a legal document stating that you will not do that. And if it is broken, it is liable to be going into court. So here's just what, um, here's just a list of things that um, carers, what, what our carers will be providing in our company. So, you know, we just, we do things like respite care and household tasks and assistance with travel, development at life skills and so forth. Okay, so these are just an idea of what we offer to our clients and what we will be doing. Okay, so this is our information privacy okay just remember that all information is confidential okay and that nothing should be being told out there about any client or any client's things you shouldn't be sitting there and broadcasting um, a client or what their needs are or what's happened on shift or anything like that, you should not be going and disclosing personal information to anybody who is not the right authority, okay? Privacy, privacy, privacy. And remember, you have also signed the document about your information privacy as well. So just remember to treat it with respect and only speak about it when it is appropriate to be spoken about and to the appropriate authorities. Absolutely no abuse, okay? I cannot stress this enough. We are committed to ensure that everyone feels safe and treated fairly and the organisation is free of abuse, exploitation and neglect. Clients with lack of communication should be well supported to detect and prevent abuse. Myself, Esther, deals with the abuse, exploitation and neglect reports seriously and confidentially and takes the best measures to mitigate the issues and punish the guilty person. Incident management policies and procedures is established to investigate and report the abuse, exploitation and neglection related issues. Okay, if you sense that there has been abuse to a client, let me know immediately so I can investigate, okay? If you yourself are treating abuse to a client, note that that is punishable by law and will also have loss of job, okay? It's very, very strict. We do not take abuse lightly in our company. So do not be thinking that it's okay. And abuse can start from anywhere from a slight smack to full on, you know, exploitation, sexual exploitation and everything else in between, okay? We do not punish our clients, we do not hit, we do not yell, we do not, you know, we do not physically shake, we do not have abuse in this company, okay? And I take all of uh, abuse complaints seriously. So, staff and workers should avoid any conflict of interest in their duties and personal interests. All workers will act in the best interest of clients and other customers, ensuring that participants are informed, empowered, and able to maximize choices and controls. Support workers, member, members will not be by act or omission constrain influence or direct decision making by a person with a disability and all their family to limit the person's access to information opportunities and choices of control none of the staff and workers shall misuse their position that ends to any personal benefit for themselves or any 
associated with them. Workers and staff should not misuse first and great support services, property, information and data for their own personal use. So this is once again, clients rights here. Okay. You are not to restrain your clients from being able to access their personal information. Don't have conflict of interest. Okay. We understand that clients are going to have different interests from you. But remember to give them the respect that is due to them, okay? Do not misuse your position. We understand that they're very, very vulnerable people out there that you will be using, um, working with. But do not misuse your power, okay, guys? I can't stress that enough. Incident reporting. All incidents, no matter how minor, needs to be reported to me, okay? You need to do this via phone or through our feedback at firstingrate.org, okay? No matter how minor it is, we need it logged. We need it documented. We need to know what's happening on the field because it might seem minor to you, but then maybe next time it gets worse and then somebody ends up very, very injured. So report, 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 report. Write it in your notes. Contact it to me. We cannot have enough documentation, okay? I cannot stress this enough. No incident is too small to be reported. Medication. Do not give clients medication. Now, we are allowed to prompt clients to have their medication. You might know that a client needs to have their schizophrenia, schizophrenia medication when she first wakes up and when you go on shift, you can say, hey, Jill, have you had your medication this morning? Yes, prompting is okay, but we cannot physically force medication down somebody's throat. Now, the only ex exceptions in this is medications that you have been trained for in your first aid. So for an example, when you do your first aid, we have been trained how to give puffers. So if we have a client that has a Ventolin and we know that that client has an inability to take that Ventolin, we do have the authority to step in and give that client Ventolin because we have been trained. Same as we may have a client that may may need medication, but may not have use of their hands. So we may have to help and assist by putting the medication in that client's hand and bringing it to their mouth for them to take. This is okay because the client has requested it, they have the right, they have spoken, they have said yes to it, but we, and they are technically still self-administering it, okay? But we cannot give medication that we are not trained to give, okay? Please take note of that. Please be prompting where you can or even prompting a family member saying, hey, was it their medication time? Okay, prompt, prompt, prompt. Ah, uh, not happy, Jen, on the phone. Yes, things that clients do not like is when you're on the phone too much, talking too much, Negative news and information, too much personal information, just dis disrespect disrespecting their culture and beliefs, judgmental. These are just a few highlights of things that clients comment constantly to me about. So please take note of this, okay? Clients are not happy when they are seeing these things done consistently. You are there for those clients. Give them respect give them what they need, be there to help them, okay? Don't spend all your time looking up at the news, up at the next uh, best news update, okay? You're gonna be fine, come back and read it later. You have rights, you the worker have rights, so make sure that you understand those rights, okay? So have a look at that list and understand what your rights are. And lucky last is that you are the face of our company. Remember, when you're on the field, they do not see me. They do not see the, the company logo. They're seeing your face, okay? When you're on the field, you become what the client 
sees the company as. So if you go there and you treat them rudely, disrespectfully, if you are uh, constantly ignoring them, not doing your, cho your job correctly, if you're being dishonest to them, whatever it may be, that's how they're going to expect that our company is treating them. And then it will give a bad rapport against the whole field, which then may end up having those clients leave our company. When those clients leave the company, you then lose that shift. When you lose that shift, you lose hours, you lose money. We also lose shifts and money as well. And it goes around in a circle. So remember how you, ref how you work is going to reflect on our company, okay? The way that you treat your clients is going to reflect back to our company and how a client will portray how the company will treat them. Your purpose, values and visions needs to be aligned with our company's purpose and values and vision as well. So make sure once again that you read that mission statement and understand what our mission is in this. Because here's the truth, people invest in people what they stand for, and what impact they have on their lives. So when you're on that field, you're the one impacting them if they're going to continue with us and continue to give us shifts or if they're going to walk away. Okay, and now we're at the end. So please, if you've had any questions, comments, anything, please, once again, contact me um, personally, or you can also ring me and we can discuss. Thank you so much.